On behalf of the Illinois Press Association and the Illinois Press Foundation, welcome to today's webinar on how to increase digital subscription. During the webinar, if you have any questions, make sure you type them in the Q&A and they will be answered uh, as we go along um, or at the end. And you're gonna be on mute during the presentation. So now, Let's get to the webinar, and I want to introduce you to Matt Larson, who is the president and CEO of Our Hometown, and take it away, Matt. All right. Thank you so much, Sandy. I appreciate it. Um, and good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us today. And um, today, I'm going to get right to it. We've got a lot to cover. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to increase digital subscriptions. This presentation is kind of a constant work in progress for me. Uh, I've given this talk four or five times in the last few months, in different formats with different associations and organizations. But what you're gonna see today is uh, basically our process for approaching paywalls, how to think about what is your paywall model, what is the pricing gonna be, and then how to market it. Because those are all you know, critical parts of the process of increasing your subscriber base. But I think now is a time more than ever that people are just rethinking their paywall strategy. So you want to really look at the whole strategy, um, not just you know how can we market more or do more sales. Maybe maybe there's something fundamentally wrong with the model. So let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, but before we get into it, uh, just some background for you, so you know who we are and uh, our you know why we have all this uh, knowledge on this area. Um, our hometown was is actually a family business. We were founded in upstate New York in 1997, and we work with newspapers. For 23 years, we've helped newspapers develop digital business models uh, that are sustainable. And you know, we currently manage hundreds of newspaper websites and native apps across North America. Uh, the apps are becoming part of their strategy. Um, we have a WordPress-based platform, which has been customized for news publishers. And our number one priority is customer support. So at this point, I'd like to introduce from our publisher support team, uh, Terry and Vera. They're going to be helping me uh, with some FAQs that we see from customers that drive the product development and, and all of this modeling that we're talking about. So welcome, Terry and Vera. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Matt. Yes, I can hear you. Great. So... Let's just talk about this uh, for a second. Uh, this idea of um, you know the fact that we're on WordPress, it's an open source platform, which means that we're not locked into anything technically, as opposed to proprietary CMS. Um, this is a constantly evolving platform, which is you know determines the feature set. That's all driven by publisher feedback. Okay, and so you'll see in a minute, we're going to go through the FAQs and then our answers to them and how we address them. Maybe you've had some of the same questions, but quick overview, uh, you know, outline here for the next 30 to 45 minutes is usually how long this runs, depending on questions. We're going to be discussing the different paywall models. Again, just you may have had the same paywall model for years, or maybe you've never had a paywall on your site. These are all things worth considering, uh, all the different options out there. We're going to talk about how we see publishers usually doing pricing and how we you know, advise them on that. And also the value of auto renewal. If you don't have auto renewal, we can talk about what that is and, and why it really uh, should be a no brainer for you th these days. Um, so if you don't have that, we can definitely help you with that. Um, third, we're gonna be talking about some of the strategies for marketing subscriptions. And uh, you'll see, this is gonna be a rapid fire session. We're gonna talk about a lot of things. So if, I, if you want this presentation, don't hesitate to email me. Uh, my email is throughout the presentation, um, so you, you, we'll send you a copy of this. But this is going to break down the strategies for where you should be marketing online, how you're going to drive people to that subscribe page. Okay, and then the last slide, uh, we're going to talk about this idea of a subscription sales blitz. You've all heard of you know digital marketing or ad sales blitzes, but I'm going to kind of introduce this idea to you, and uh, I'd really be interested in your feedback. Okay, so right now... Before we go forward, Sandy mentioned it. I appreciate that, Sandy. Um, I'd love it for you all to locate the chat box. I guess it is. it's not the questions area. Let's go to the chat area. And just if you could all, um, I think that's the, the right area. To do. I'm sorry, I, I use GoToMeeting, not Zoom. 
But let's let's use chat, type your name, paper you're with, and about the number of digital subscribers you have today, just so we could all kind of get a feel for who we're talking to. Um, and maybe that'll help bring some context to this as you know, or we can add more context as we keep going. Okay, so uh, we'll wait to see your answers get dropped in there. Terry and Vera, if you could kind of keep an eye on that as we go. Um, but let's move on to the first FAQ. Okay, thank you, Sandy. Appreciate that. Um, Terry, I think you have this one for me. This is probably one of the most popular questions of 2020. Can you walk us through this one? Sure. This comes from a publisher in Florida, and they said, we are thinking about finally launching a paywall. Finally. What are the different <laughs> paywall models available, and which have you seen the most success with? This is probably our, our most popular question. Right. Again, yeah, it is. it is, And I do an entirely separate talk on rethinking paywalls because I think even free print newspapers should be considering it. And that's the case with this Florida group. They are free in print and they're considering a paywall. Um, so whether you're just launching your first paywall or if you have one already and it's just not quite working for you, let's look at all the options. Let's just lay out all the cards on the table and see what we have to work with. So the different types of paywall models that we typically see, uh, not just on our customers, but you know across the board, is uh, the hard pay. First one is the hard paywall, and you'll see this is going to be a continuum of free access. You know, so we're all the way on the most conservative right side of the spectrum um, with the hard paywall, which restricts all content to paid customers only. And I'm just going to show you some examples of these. These, again, these slides are available. Uh, so you can have easy access to all these links. But this is a paper uh, down in Texas, Leon County today, and this is a hard paywall. And I probably don't really need to demonstrate this. You all know what it is at this point, but every article is gonna look like this. You're gonna hit, click on an article and you'll see the teaser and then it asks you to log in or subscribe, okay? So that's you know pretty straightforward on that one. Let's take a look at now the, the soft paywall that has a lot more nuances to it. The soft paywall, is basically, I would define it as a mix of free and paid content. Now the question is, what is that mix gonna be and what's gonna determine what's free? That's really what separates all these different models. So you've got specific categories set for free. We have that at the Journal Trib. I actually have these links open. So the journaltrib.com paper up in North Dakota, they set certain categories for free. So everything on the homepage is paid. This is basically all a hard paywall unless it has free access next to the uh, section heading, the category heading. So when you have the, the tag up at that level, that means the whole category is free. And I think that's how most CMSs work. So uh, you know that should be an option with your paywall. Um, and then we've also got the uh, Gaffney Ledger. So let's just rapid fire through these examples. They're doing specific, let's see, specific articles are marked for free. So. Again, the homepage, most of this is a hard paywall, but they then pick and choose which stories are free. So they're not defining it on the category level. Um, the, you know, they're, they're pick and choosing. So there's, there's benefits to both, obviously. When you do the category level, you just make that decision once, set it, forget it, and anything put in that category is free. With this, it takes the extra effort to go onto the website and decide what's gonna be free each week. But you know, it does give you that level of control. Okay, so we're getting some answers here. Um, hey, Todd, welcome uh, from Journal Topics. Looking good there uh, on your numbers. Um, Jenna, thank you very much from the Herald Wig uh, and the uh, Woodstock Independent. Welcome everyone from, from Jen. Um, those are looking like very nice numbers, but let's see what we can do to get those numbers up for you guys. So see if I can give you some ideas today. So let's get back to the presentation. We've got the third model is uh, what we've seen at Port Aransas South Jetty, and I'm not going to demonstrate it. It's pretty simple to imagine. It's a time-based soft paywall. And so quick raise of hands, let's say, a virtual raise of hands. Anyone that has, if, let, just, if everyone could just type whether your paper is paid or free in the chat, let's just do that right now. Let's see how many people we have a, have a free print newspaper versus paid. 
because this is the model that I see a lot of times when it's free, when the newspaper is free in print. Okay, so it looks like most people are paid here. Port Aransas is a paid print edition, and they have this paywall model where um, the archives go free. So the current news is paid, the archives are free. And I, I think there there is a lot of logic to that. You could also do the inverse where the current news is free and the archives are paid. That is a more common application at free uh free newspapers 10 type of paid or free okay yeah it looks like pretty much every this the, i guess the title has drawn uh, the paid um subscription models uh, to the the conversation so that's fine um i always have to keep in mind the free papers though uh so the metered paywall this is really a type of soft paywall when you think about it because it is a mix of free and paid but i put it in its own category because it's so popular and I believe it's the model that we want to use uh, going forward and uh, for most publishers. And uh, the Chesterfield Observer is a free paper that did this. And we've seen tons of paid newspapers, but I'd like to talk about the unique cases. And so we're going to go into <clears throat> a little bit more of a deep dive on them in a second, a little case study on them. So I'll skip that for now. The last wall that we have, again, since it looks like we have mostly uh, paid newspapers, you're not going to consider the registration wall if you're paid. But if you're a free print newspaper, registration wall can make sense. What that looks like here at the Amherst B, oh, this Zoom thing's getting in my way. Hold on. At the Amherst B, this is a free print newspaper. They have a registration wall, which means you can read any article for free. You just need to create an account. Okay, it's a free account. Uh, there's absolutely no payment involved, but you need to basically give us your email to read the stories. So, you know, I, I always like to throw that out there as a consideration for free papers. Okay. And you can't see my <laughs> last thing there. There it is. Again, email ops at our-hometown.com if you'd like a copy of the slides, and we'll be happy to send you a PDF so you have all these examples. Okay, quick poll here. We've uh, we've gotten a lot of participation through the chat, which is great. So let's keep that rolling. What kind of a paywall model do you have on your website today, given all of the options that we've laid out here? Um, hard, some type of soft paywall, metered, registration. Beverly says metered. Okay, so let's see if that's that's the leader statistically as uh, it is in my experience. Okay, so thank you very much for all that feedback, by the way. Keep it coming as we go. I'm just going to keep the presentation going. Um, this is an example from uh, Southern California of a group of free newspapers uh, that launched a paywall. I probably will just briefly touch on this because we don't have a lot of free papers here. But I just thought this was interesting. You all might want to hear this story. I mean, he was basically seeing that his print audience was di being diminished because he was giving away the content online. And, you know, that's clearly true for paid print editions. We, you know, we're cannibalizing ourselves if we're giving it away online. But it was surprising for me to hear this, that people are canceling a free print edition that's delivered to their house, uh, you know, to save the paper because they get it all for free online anyway. So that really drove him. He recognized the economics going on. Um, and he, he just he has a paywall just on his website and it's still uh, free in print. So let's uh, move on now. That's our uh, quick case study uh, on the acorn. For our next FAQ, I think this one is from uh, Vera. Am I right? That's right. Okay. Yeah, a publisher in North Dakota asks, can we automatically send a renewal notice to remind readers when their subscription has expired? Right. Okay, so um, renewal notices. Uh, this is something that yeah people are often asking about because they're used to thinking about the print subscription. There's a renewal notice that's required there. You know, you need to get payment again. So um, that's just the mindset that they're coming from. But what if I could do you one better, and that would be with auto renewal. How about forget auto reminders? Let's just renew the subscription. So auto renewals to me are the biggest thing. Uh, that if you could take away anything that you're not doing now, you should look into how to get this set up. So let's get some more feedback here. Thank you for everyone. It looks like everyone said metered, except for we have one hard paywall that gives away three free stories a week. So that's kind of an interesting mix. But now let's get some more feedback. Who's got auto renewing subscriptions? Who, who has them? Let's just say who has them and who doesn't. 
Uh, let's get feedback. Someone's raising their hand. Um, how do I? Oh, so that's the that's your confirmation. Okay, thank you. That's two, three, four. Looks like a lot of people have them, which is good. So you already get this. Uh, so, but anyone that doesn't have it, um, I think it's it's something that maybe people didn't want to do initially because it seemed a little bit aggressive. But these days, I think it, it's just common practice for all digital subscription uh, platforms, you know, like Netflix and HBO and everything. So people are used to it. And the idea is you, re you force them to opt out rather than repeatedly opt in, which is going to increase your retention. It is convenient for the customer. I don't know if anyone actually pitches it as a benefit out there, like on the subscribe page, but we have a customer that does that. So, you know, she says it right out front, you know, uh, unlimited access, one ninety nine a week with auto renewal. You know, it's it's not like uh, just a, a good business practice for us. It's actually good customer support. Okay, and then finally, I just you know want to emphasize that this is the Netflix model, and auto renewals enable you to really do the Netflix model, which is something like get your foot in the door for an extremely low price. Netflix does it for free. But you could do it for, you know, like the New York Times model, discount it to 99 cents for the first month. But be, if you have auto renewal engaged, most, sorry, most platforms will allow you to auto renew at the full price. So it doesn't just auto renew at 99 cents. Um, that's definitely true with member press, so, which is uh, the WordPress plugin we use. So that's just a quick side note on, on auto renewal, pretty basic concept. But, um, you know, I hope everyone will look into doing that. Um, let's, Terry, we're back to our next FAQ. Again, just these, these are the questions that have driven the development of our platform and our offerings for 23 years. So what, what are, what's another common question we've gotten this year? How would you recommend we price our digital subscriptions? That comes from New York. And this right. Is, it's a toss up. That's probably the second most requested. Right. Yeah. I, I feel like a lot of publishers feel, um, you know, they, they don't really have a foundation to start with here, but you do. And this is how we approach this. And, um, you know, this is part of our whole um, onboarding process, I'll say. I think I, I mentioned this again later, but when you come to our hometown, part of uh, the launch process is to develop a whole strategy for your website, for your digital business model, and we help you arrive at these prices. So, you know, we can give you more detailed advice. And I'm just going to give you ranges here because everyone's paper is different, but I would be interested in like this. I, I feel like this is like your standard unit, the monthly price. So if you all wouldn't mind, if you have monthly offerings, drop your monthly price into the chat. I'd love to hear what kind of range we see, but this is basically, you know, what, what we're looking at um, for a single issue sale online. We're looking at uh, two to $3 is a common range. And, uh, you know, that's based on a print edition that's about a dollar, a dollar twenty five. Um, and so the reasoning there is they have unlimited access to this edition from any device anywhere in the world. You know, they don't have to keep the paper around. It's just super convenient. So you're really selling the convenience of that single issue sale for the month to month. You know, uh, I think this price point is is this range is right where most papers want to be because it's, again, comparable to a lot of the other subscription. Um, content providers. And then, you know, the year is usually based on your print price. So let's see what we're looking at for ranges. Um, oh, wow. Awesome. It looks like we're right on target. I mean, you guys are right on are in agreement with us. Uh, 995 for a monthly subscription, Jenna. I think that's what you mean there. That That's a very good price if that's what you're charging monthly. Nice. Excellent. Um, so you're on the high end. Four dollars from Carter, six to ten from Beverly, and uh, Todd. Thank you for uh, pointing this out. Sixty-six dollars a year, five ninety-nine a month. I like those two options. Just offering, you know, keeping the offering simple is better. I think the less choice you have, there's this thing called the paradox of choice. You know, you go into the grocery store, you see five different types of ketchup. It's like I'm more annoyed now than I was before coming in here because now you're making me choose. So let's not put 10 different subscription options out there. Uh, let's boil it down to the essentials. Okay, and then also from Rebecca, $2 a month to nine. I'm interested in these ranges. What determines this range? Is it their location? Because someone, uh, Beverly said six to $10. 
Um, and then you say up to 1995 per month. So Rebecca, you're saying you have a range of two to 1995 per month. If you could tell us what determines where they wind up in that range, that would be really interesting. Legacy subscribers. Okay, that's the full price. So you're doing what I'm going to talk about in a minute, which is basically put out a full price and then discount in special cases to do to basically, you know, do marketing and and push people over the fence, so to say. So let's let's get to that. But um, in terms of the pricing, all I want to just point out here again is that you want to charge at least as the as much as the equivalent period in print. Okay, I think some publishers are still discounting the digital. They're discounting it literally with the price, but they're also discounting the you know perception of the value by charging less. It's still the same information. It's really more convenient than the print edition. Some people prefer the print format, the medium, but there's no arguing that you know carrying around a, a paper and you know dozens of papers is is a hassle. So you know with it. Uh, unlimited access subscription for whatever your price is, five to ten bucks a month, they're getting unlimited access to the archives. So that's how we justify the higher price. You know, so you charge a buck uh, per edition. We we would say at least five dollars for that uh, monthly uh, subscription. Okay, and then that also leaves you room to discount, which is what Rebecca has clearly done. You got a lot of room. I mean, you go from nineteen down to two dollars in some cases. So that's like, that's a lot like the New York Times. I don't know what their price is for a month, but I know they have a, an introductory offer of 99 cents for the first week. So, you know, you, that's got to be a pretty big discount. I'm not sure what the percent is, though. Okay. And then, again, as part of a new website design, we work with publishers. Uh, you know, we take our experience and we do some projections based on your current subscribers, either in digital or in print. And we try to project what are the numbers going to be, what kind of revenue can we expect at different price points. Okay. And then, so, Todd, we got uh, 43 bucks a year one for one year in print, right? And then $66 for online. I love it. So Todd is charging, uh, that looks like almost 150% of the print price. So that's that's great. That's exactly the range you want to be. Okay, let's get back to our FAQs. Uh, again, I'd, I'd be interested if you guys have these questions as well, if these are things that um, you know popped up in your head. But is this one, I think Vera, we back to Vera now? Yep, uh, this is from a publisher in Michigan. What do other publishers do to market subscriptions to the website? We have many followers on Facebook and email subscribers on our, e or on our newsletter list. Sorry. That's all right. Yeah, exactly. No, that's, this is uh, huge. Um, so now we're at the marketing phase. We've, we've figured out what our model is going to be. We figured out our pricing. It looks like a lot of you already have that figured out. So that's great. Uh, now let's just figure out how are we going to grow. Let's just fuel this uh, engine and grow this thing. So marketing subscriptions, I think you just want to initially take this list here. I'm going to give you uh, six, I think it's six, no, it's five places that you want to have some type of marketing. And this is just a checklist you can do in your head and just make sure that, you know, you're there because it's, this is not rocket science, <laughs> you know, I'm just looking at what other people are doing and and uh, trying to make it easy for people to buy a subscription. You know, when they want to buy, make it as easy for, as possible for them to get where they need to be. And this is where they need to be. This is from the journaltrib.com and this is their subscription page. So it's got the three simple products laid out very clearly and um, you know, the auto renewal pointed out here. So we want to get them to this page. That's the bottom line. How do we do it? First place is your home page. That's where you're going to get the most eyeballs, the most traffic by far uh, is going to your webs or your home page. And so you want to have something right at the top. I like something that's styled as like a button that's very simple with just some a minimal text on it, really easy to read. So that's usually what we recommend. And we definitely recommend putting it at the top because then it's going to appear towards the top on mobile as well. When you have a mobile responsive site, the the elements of the page, at least on WordPress, render left to right, top to bottom. So on mobile, we'll have our logo and then the subscribe button right there. But uh, 
yeah, so the bottom line is here you can you can run some kind of display ad on the home page if you want. You you want it more graphical, but just something on the home page in a nice bright color. Um, so people always know when they make that decision to buy, they know where to go. Okay, here's another area of, I guess, uh, a point of sale or an opportunity is on the article teaser page. Okay, so if you have someone that's visiting your website enough, and let's say you got a metered paywall, since a lot of people do, you got a metered paywall, someone's using up that meter every month, they're going to be hitting this page on that fourth or fifth article. And so, you know, we need to have, we need to take advantage of that opportunity. So, usually what you can do, uh, pretty much every CMS with a, you know, a subscription system is going to have this cutoff and the option to log in. Uh, with our system, you can customize the message here. So, you can, you know, put colors in. You can put like a large subscribe button or a large login button. We've seen that done. Uh, you know, this is pretty straightforward setup, but it's got all the essentials. So, it's saying first log in. Because we, we don't want people, you know, if they have a subscription or if they, even if they're an expired subscriber, we want them logging in first and then at purchasing a new subscription so then you don't have multiple records and things like that. So, but um, so that, that's partly just like good customer support. You know, if someone is a subscriber and they're just on a new device, we want to make it really easy. Here's how you log in. Uh, you know, sorry, <laughs> we shut you out of this one. I know you're a subscriber, so log in and you can read the whole thing right away. But then there's also the option to purchase, obviously. So that's that's where the sales come in, okay? Then we've got the newsletter, and I think this is a uh, key to any marketing campaign. The newsletter, you can't be depending on social media these days, just, you know, they're changing things all the time, their algorithms are not dependable, you don't know who's gonna actually see your content. So we'll talk about social media, you, you do need to be there, uh, we believe, but the newsletter should be a priority because then it's one-to-one -one direct communication. You actually control the relationship rather than letting Mark Zuckerberg control it, right? So on the newsletter, you can put in custom messages. You can put in something, just click here to read, click here to subscribe. We can put a banner ad in there, uh, but you want to have some type of a messaging in there because most newsletters, I don't think I've ever seen one of our customers have a paid newsletter where it's only paid. Usually you want the newsletter to be free because then you know, our, our paying subscribers will get it and that's going to reinforce the value of their current subscription. But it's also a sales tool. So anyone that signs up for our newsletter, we know they're interested in our content enough to give us their email. So but if they're not a subscriber, then we really want to, they're not a paying subscriber. We want to um, zone in on them. So let's talk about that. You can do it with our system with an automated coupon code generator. We'll talk about that in this case study here. So with the Chesterfield Observer, I mentioned this paper earlier. Uh, they're a paper out of uh, Virginia and uh, free in print. And they've been with us for years. Uh, but, you know, this year, the 2020 was the year they decided it's finally time to do a paywall. So um, they launched a free registration wall with a meter. And I want to point this out to anyone you know, even no matter what your print model is, paid or free, I think this is a genius way to launch a paywall, a launch a new paywall. So let's say, for example, you get, you know, you, you get a new website with our hometown uh, and, and you want to have like an intro month to kind of give people a taste of all the new features on the website. This is what we see publishers do a lot. Um, they'll, for the first month, do a free registration wall with a meter, which means that Anyone can look at this. The site is still open, but in open access, but there, there is the meter. So it's going to start counting down from three stories. And then once you hit that limit, then all you got to do is create a free account to get unlimited access. And so the point of this is to collect as many emails as possible. That's that's what this is all about. It's we're, we're sacrificing a month of potential revenue to gather thousands of emails which then we can market to because after the first introductory month of the free metered wall or the free uh, the, the metered registration wall, then you launch a metered paywall, okay? And now that we've got this huge email list of people that you know were interested enough to give us their email to read all the stories, then we can use our automated newsletter marketing tool to send them promotions. So we've built it so that the newsletter talks to 
the uh, subscription system and identifies the emails that are not active subscribers. So either they're ex-subscribers or they've never subscribed, but they're on the newsletter list. And we can send them a special promo code or just a special message of some kind that only they'll get on their weekly email. So they'll have their teasers and they'll, you know, they'll get the same email, but it's, it's just this banner that goes across the top. And so if this is something that you're not doing today, I think it's really key. You can do a lot of this stuff with MailChimp. You know, if you don't have uh, a newsletter built into your website, you can identify, you know, compare the list. There's ways to do it manually, but we, we have a tool to automate that. Okay, so let me just check in, make sure I'm not missing any questions. I think I don't have any unanswered questions yet, so p please feel free. If there's any questions that you have about what we've seen so far, make sure to get them in the chat now so we don't miss them. But um, we're winding up here. We're about 30 minutes in. Okay, I think we're, we're right on schedule. So now let's get back to the marketing subscriptions. So we've talked about newsletters, social media. You know, we've all we – just the audience is there, you know, so there's no denying that we – we kind of need access to that, but I would just say you don't want to depend on that and have that be your only marketing source. So if you're going to do it though, you want to put links to your um, website. You know, you're never publishing full articles on social media. I think everyone knows that at this point, uh, but you know, you're going to always directing people to your website, which is paywalled of course, or metered. And uh, then what this publisher does is writes a, a brief one sentence teaser and then she puts in the price of the subscription right into that post with auto renewal I think that's really key to just be getting the the price out there you know like um, Rebecca really advertising 1995 every chance you get because then it's like um, what when, when you offer a, a discount they're gonna recognize it oh you know it's usually 1995 10% off you know let me jump on that uh, I think it's it's really key to to get that price point in their head, okay. So let's um, <clears throat> let's take a break here before I move on to the next. Row. Excuse me, <laughs> and answer some questions. I got a frog in my throat there. Okay, so um, at some point I missed an email. We, we, I will put my email up again at the end, Jen. Thank you very much. Um, okay, Beverly is saying we struggle to get people to sign up for digital subscriptions. We always promote both digital and newspaper specials together. Should we be marketing separately or okay to market together? That's a great question. I think that, so uh, we see a lot of different approaches to this. Some publishers will just keep them completely separate. And if you have a print subscription, you still got to pay full price for digital. But I think there's some value to offering a digital subscription for a discount, you know, not anything crazy but just like in the lines in in line with what we'd be offering as part of these promotions that we've been talking about um, offering a, a discount to print subscribers you just need a way to you know make sure that they're an active subscriber you need a way to compare the the lists our system does that automatically you just need to upload you know your print CSV of active subscribers um, but I mean just to answer your question I think you want to market them together I think that to give you the most straightforward answer, market them together because uh, I just say that because we need to present ourselves as a unified publishing channel as newspapers. We're not just a print paper and websites over there, and, you know, and the print people don't talk about the website. We got to be talking about everything all at the same time. And that's actually a great segue <laughs> as a coincidence here to the last critical thing on your checklist. Uh, you want to make sure that you're marketing which is in the print edition. So uh, with this, what a lot of publishers will do is put the, can't really see it on this example, but I will just pull this up, um, this E edition. Oh, shoot, I actually logged out. Let's see if I can. Um, with Cecile's paper in North Dakota, they put the logo, you know, right, or the URL right in the header, which I think is a minimum. You want to have it there just so that people know where to refer to. Uh, I never really would have thought that this was going to be an issue, but during shutdown, we actually had people asking the, their publishers, you know, our customers, um, 
what is your URL? They, they didn't actually know what it is because they had never been. But, you know, when they had to stop printing for a few weeks or something, they, they had to know at that point. So we want that in their mind, again, just like that price point. So I would also recommend, uh, Cecile doesn't do it, but I would say put it right in the footer of every page of uh, the print edition. Uh, there are some papers that have done that. So it's just, you know, right first uh, front and center. Now let's talk, uh, switch here now to uh, this blog post. This is an extension of the print idea. Um, and I just want you all to know about our blog also. This is an opportunity for me to let you know. Um, we have a very active blog. We're putting out two to three posts a week. And uh, most of those posts are just widely uh, applicable to any publisher in the industry. You don't have to be in our hometown customer. Uh, a lot of these things are relevant to our hometown operations and our features, but this one is a good example of something that we had published at uh, you know, the National Newspaper Association because people just find it useful. So the first thing is putting your website on the front page, but then these other points here are just generally about making the print and the digital part of one product. So exactly like what Beverly asked earlier in terms of the pricing, I think in terms of the content, we want to present it as one product. So what this first idea is, the second idea here is to publish surplus photos on the website from your print edition. So that would mean, you know, let's say you got some uh, big homecoming game or something, you got hundreds of pictures taken and maybe like, you know, 50 of them are awesome. You can only print two, right? So in the print edition, what I would suggest you do is you tell people in print more photos, you know, hundreds of more photos available online. You could give them the URL, but that's kind of a pain. Who's going to type a URL? And you just say, go to our website and, uh, you know, click on the, the story in, the, in this category or something. You kind of direct them to the website, drive that traffic there, get people using the two interchangeably. You know, so maybe one day these people that only read print, they'll start reading it online one day a week or something. You know, we can start to get them acclimated. Okay, also continuing the story, it's the exact same concept. If you have a long form story, uh, you only want, you only have room for part of it on, in the print edition. You can put, publish the whole thing online. And also things like PDF documents. Let's say you got a story about a school board meeting and you got the notes from the school board in PDF form. Obviously you can't print those. Just put a link on the website, you know. Uh, any type of multimedia that you can offer, we, wa we want to uh, do that online and we want to promote it in the print edition. Um, just as a quick note here, I'll point out one uh, interactive feature that we have, uh, audio articles. This will automatically turn all your text articles into mini podcasts so people can listen to the story. So now what you could do in the print edition is say, you know, read the story online and listen to it on our podcast channel. Because when you do something like this, it, it makes it a lot easier to produce a podcast. But um, even if you just have the, the playable articles on your website, you promote that fact in print. Okay. Now let's go back. <clears throat> Interactive online content. So you've got video, you've got polls and contests. These are, you know, ways you, you talk about the poll or you talk about the results of the poll, even more interesting, in the print edition, and then you promote your next upcoming poll. And it's all happening online because it's the easiest way that you could possibly vote. Okay, uh, that's, I think that's all that I'll mention on that for now. So those are some ideas from our blog. Um, and then lastly, I want to talk a little bit about YouTube. This is, um, I'm going to make this quick. So I just mentioned that this feature uh, that we have uh, audio articles. So what you can do um, with YouTube and what we're doing with a, a group down in Alabama is actually creating video from the audio articles, combining it with uh, the images from the story. So again, just to be totally clear, audio articles is a feature uh, that we have at our hometown. It turns your text articles into uh, a story that you can listen to and then we're working on a way to automate the production of these videos um, but for right now this is manually put together by our producer I'm just going to show you a quick sample so that you can get a taste of this you're listening to the Clark County Democrat audio articles podcast to get unlimited access to all the news on ClarkCountyDemocrat.com, you can subscribe for just eight dollars per month use the coupon code podcast 
to get your first month for just 99 cents. So there's cents. your promotion. Again, that's coupon code PODCAST <clears throat> to get your first month for just 99 cents. Now, let's head to the news. I'm going to skip to this one here. Still awaiting FEMA help with Zeta. It has been six weeks since Hurricane Zeta tore through Central Clark County, downing trees and power lines, blowing off roofing shingles and otherwise damaging homes. All right. So, again, I, 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 I'm going to have a totally different virtual conference on this topic. It's, it's a really big uh, technology to get into in two minutes here. But this we're excited about because this is a way to get into the next generation that's honestly getting a lot of their news from YouTube. So uh, this is a, a tool and a process that we're working on to grow subscriptions on uh, you know, video platforms. And these videos you know, are, are not going to require you to have a, a video producer or anything like that. It um, you know, will be completely automated. So um, let's now move on to, I think, the last slide, okay, or the last FAQ. Um, so we're, we're going to wrap it up here in a minute, but um, is this from Terry? I forget. Yep, this is from me. Okay. Uh, hey, it's from a publisher in Texas. They said, we launched our paywall a few years ago and subscriptions seems, seem to have leveled out. What can we do to increase and most importantly, retain digital right. subscribers? Right. So let's, let's talk about this concept of a digital sales blitz. I you know, everyone has maybe everyone has even done an ad sales blitz with uh, you know the different companies out there that do that. Um, I don't know if those are happening as much anymore. So maybe we can apply some of those resources to selling subscriptions. And this is just you know a, a concept I want to share with you. Um, where would you start? I would say you want to start with your newsletter activity. So again, it goes back to that newsletter. Uh, I talked about some automated tools that we have for sending them promotions, but this would be a somewhat more aggressive way to, to do this. You know, that's why I call it a sales blitz. So with the newsletter activity, we can you know, identify warm leads based on the people that are clicking on our newsletter. And in that group of newsletter subscribers, we have a mix. And we don't know who's who all the time. Um, but some of them are current subscribers, some of them are expired, and some of them have never subscribed, actually paid. So of the, the expired subscriber subset, people that are on our newsletter list clicking on our newsletter, it makes sense. I would suggest that it makes sense to do a direct email follow up to these people because what you could do is just take your newsletter list, export, you know, any newsletter system can do this. MailChimp can do it. They can go in and say, give me a report of all the people that clicked uh, on the last two or three newsletters. They clicked on a link in every one. Those are our hot leads. Then you get that list in a CSV, you compare it to your subscriber list, and you figure out who uh, maybe subscribed in the past. And that's gonna be a relatively short list. You know, you, and then you can just go hammer that out, give it to one of your ad sales reps to do, you know, just have them do some other selling for a while. Uh, send all these people a special offer via email, and then maybe even follow up with a phone call because if you have, if they're an expired subscriber, they probably gave you their phone number when they signed up. That, that's part of our form anyway. It's a required field. So we have all this interesting information on ex-subscribers, which is probably the most likely group of people to buy again. If they bought in the past, it's very likely they'll be interested now. Um, or at least I, I would say that's, that's the first group I would go after. Then you've got current subscribers. Again, from that list of people that are opening your newsletter, you look at who's engaged with the newsletter, and then you can look at your um, subscribe, your digital subscriber list, figure out who's on both those lists, and then just reach out to them. Call to get general feedback on the website. Uh, have a survey prepared on you know what they like about the website, what could be improved. Make them feel involved with the publication, and you know as a thank you for their time, offer them a discounted gift subscription. So that's another thing that we didn't talk about. Another way to grow subscriptions is to offer. Uh, gift subscriptions so that your current subscribers can buy for their friends and family. Um, I guess if, of all the groups, that's probably the you, the first one that you want to go after, right? Because you know they're they're obviously uh, happy with us. They're current subscribers. Uh, they're the most likely to you know put more money into this basically and uh, 
bring someone else into the fold. That's that's the other benefit. It's um, they're they're bringing us a lead basically for future um, business. And then you've got your never subscribers, which you could you know again call or email, offer just a free month, no strings attached. Uh, you know, th there's ways that you can require them to put their credit card in and then it auto renews, but you can also do it without them putting their credit card in um, so that it's really just absolutely no strings attached. It gives them this free preview. Um, these are my ideas. These are something that we're testing. I, I haven't seen a whole lot of uh, our customers doing this, but we're testing these ideas at a group of papers in uh, Alabama and, um, you know, just seeing if, if uh, they take hold. So... Um, that's all that I've got for you guys today. We went pretty much the full time. So um, please drop your questions now. Some these questions that came in earlier are absolutely fantastic. So I really think they add to the value of the whole presentation. So if you have any others, please share them here. Uh, I just want to give you all a quick overview. We've got a bunch of virtual conferences coming up in the early new year. Um, and so the last one, actually, in late February, I'm going to be talking a lot more about audio articles and getting into video and audio podcasting. But um, a lot of this stuff is just uh, things that are common questions. So discussing mobile, social media strategy, a little bit more on that. Uh, those will be coming up in January. Okay. And so I'm not seeing any other questions coming in, so I'll just wrap it up here. If anyone has any feedback for me, if you could please just leave a quick comment in the questions area, what you liked, what you didn't like. Um, I think we should all be able to see those answers. So uh, again, email ops. Yep. I was just going to ask you. <laughs> yep. I included it. So I would not forget. Uh, ops at our hometown.com our-hometown.com. I'd love to provide a copy of these slides if you found any of it useful, just, you know, because I, I know there's a lot of different links in there. Um, and also, I want to just offer everyone on the call, uh, you know, for being part of the Illinois Press Association and for taking the time to join us today, uh, we're going to offer free prototypes to everyone on the call. So all you got to do is send us a PDF of your paper and we'll turn it into a fully interactive website. It'll have your logo on it. It'll have your content right there. We actually do our PDF extraction process as part of the prototyping. And uh, if you're interested, just send the files again to ops at our-hometown.com, but we'd like you to use WeTransfer. So you go to wetransfer.com, put in that email as the to email, and then it'll ask for your email as the from, and then you can basically email very large documents. It's just way easier than email, which often gets hung up. Um, okay, I think that's all I've got. So, uh, Sandy, anything else you want to say at the end here? And Cecilia, or Cecilia and- Thank you. want to thank you very much. This was very informative, and I can tell by the um, comments there that people got some things out of it, and Great. it's wonderful. I did. I learned a few things, and- uh, Great. Um, and very helpful. Oh, so, good. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Oh, so have a great holiday, Matt. And I want yes, to wish everyone too. on the call uh, on the webinar uh, happy holidays and be watching for more of these webinars next year. And I know we'll have Matt back again, too. So can't yeah, wait. Thank you, everyone. Have a great holiday. Yep. You as well. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Happy holidays. Bye.